after uh, I finished my feasibility study in my uh, business to be uh, put up, I uh, went down to L.A. Uh, to uh, discuss it to my brother around uh, June. This is really funny because everybody is asking why I landed in that uh, church in Sun Valley, California and even became a uh, property custodian. 2007, I went to L.A. Uh, because I already uh, finished my prototype for uh, my species scaling machine. And the reason I'm there is for to look for a patent attorney at the same time uh, for investor. So I rented a room uh, in Temple where I met Noni Abo, a, a general contractor. It was introduced by my roommate. And then that's the start. Especially when I told him that I'm going to put up churches but he was surprised. He said, what, are you going to become a pastor? No, I said, I'm going to build small churches for those pastors, independent churches. Anyways, he's just smiling and said, okay, you're going to learn, friend. There's a lot of things you must know about churches and about Christianity. This is the history of our local church, the Faith Bible Church of Los Angeles, California, founded by the Reverend Bishop Dr. Nene or Rene Ramientos. I'm going to read, this is uh, what uh, Reverend Nene Ramientos have written in his uh, book, in his life story. Okay, in page 18, about this time, I was awarded the doctoral degree in ministry by the Southern California Theological Seminary in Stanton, South California. It was a recognition of my years of ministry both in the country and in other countries. The conferment was made in a simple but impressive service in a church in San Diego, California attended by the members of my family and friends. The seminary was presented by vice president, by its vice president. It was during those pastoral ministries when I also accepted invitations to ministers in other countries. First was an invitation for me to serve as a pastor of the Filipino-American congregation at Eagle Rock in Los Angeles. California. After a few months of pastoring at Eagle Rock, I formed, okay, he said I formed a new congregational, a new congregation named Faith Bible Church of Los Angeles. It was 1985. At first we met in homes. As our membership grew, we met in rented church homes. Our membership, okay, let me, uh, let me emphasize this. As our membership grew, we met in rented church homes. So they even started renting some church homes. Okay now, let me continue. Our membership grew steadily as more people joined us, mostly as a result of our home Bible study groups. Later, when my son, Pastor Joseph, It's a white dad's, dad's run. Yeah. Anyway, we don't want to, be, to get involved in that. Yeah. Because they might throw, you know, they might uh, do something to the church or anything. Unless it's in our property, so, but this is outside. I cannot sleep because I'm having a head and I'm coughing. No, no. <coughs> yeah, that's the reason I... <coughs> Where is the fire department?
Yeah. Something nice, you know. By the collaboration of other pastors, especially the congregation of Pastor Jesse Corona, the one that believed, and he even said, and he even made this kind of prophecy that I'll be used to make some changes in churches. And I say, why me? After paying everything, the property, renovating it, paying the taxes, and everything, nothing is gained except, I don't know, after three years of knowing what is really the Four Square Church International, after attending and being part of the staff of the Bible Institute, nobody can fool us, especially this corporate pastor that came and took over. Come on, man. You are ashamed to the corporation. And time come also that you should be exposed of your wrongdoing. Nobody can hide in the eye, in the eye of God. And nobody is above the law. Amen to you. The renovation, repairs, and the upgrading to the building code of this building, the Fellowship Hall, which is constructed 1955. This is that old this building is. And what Hector have said, Okay, because during the time that he mentioned about that one room that we started to repair and to be reclaimed, repainted, oh boy. And this is the work that was done from 2008 to 2015 to this fellowship hall. Then we open it, this property, to be used by other independent churches like us that believes in sharing the property that belongs to our God that is a God of order, God of righteousness, and a God that is faithful. The presence of the Holy Spirit is felt in that property, especially in our chapel, because this was mentioned by two people. First, so, again, these the wife of Benjamin, the one. And then, the wife of Pastor Jesse Corona, Pastor Gloria Corona, have seen that yes, divine we did a whole thing. We came here, we had a Bible study, and Sister Letty right. said, Letty, the uh, then, of us. Then, after Jessica said, said, said that the Holy Spirit told him that, I'll be used. He said, come on, man. But now I do understand. And we went there and said, it's scarcely. And I know nothing about prayers. I just saw, you know, some piece of tin. Mm -hmm. And I said, ah. The first one we saw, ah. The second one, I was like, ah. But you know what, some of the men here, they said, that's a care street. That trailer like that cost $24,000 when it's brand new. It's the Rolls Royce of trailers. And then we started going in and all the controls were still in there. And they said, no, no, let's, let's take it, let's take it. We'll make it a project for church. And you know what, we need housing for our men. There are two men in this church that are now occupying one room. And I'm hoping that later on, that would be a habitable housing for them. Because if we get a trainer and they're cold, I don't like that. We have to take care of our people. These are workers of the church. These are not people that are indigent, you know, asking us to help them. That's not the case. These people are workers of the church. And their health has to be protected. And having said that, they decided we'll buy it, we'll refurbish it, we'll talk about the cost of the church later. And you know what, church? When you see it, we will step up.
Okay, this afternoon we will take care of that. Everything is in budget anyway. We are given time. And they told me, well, if the church doesn't want it, we'll sell it for $2,500. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll just sell it. So even then, I said, okay, let's go and do that. But things are moving. As you can see, in the back, the rooms are being taken over so that we can use them. We already have that big clean room that's available. In fact, the carpet and practice there. The piano has already been moved there. There is a divider over the carpet, of course, that you can move. It is available for your use anytime. <coughs> we have that other room for your use. We can use it for, uh, and the locks will be changed and all, so that the functionality of that room can be used for married couples or whatever. But we are now, again, the reason we bought that later, we are in the process of reclaiming the second room. And now that we have all our rooms together, you know what? People still have quinceaneras out there. That okay, now, we will see, we will see, we will as you can see, this is not a small property. This is a four acres property. So, just try to remember this. The grass did not cut itself, and the building did not repair we're itself. We're doing our uh, work there, you see that. Uh, we're doing some work over here, because uh, Pastor Noni told me, Okay, let's help Pastor Hector to build up the church. Because actually, uh, the condition of the church is not like this before. Since you don't have any values in you, can you uh, just look at the church? You see, like a... Uh, maybe I can call myself the first custodian of this church under Pastor Hector. So when the devil starts to attack us and discourage us, We love you so much. Your name is miraculous, Jesus. Your name is supernatural, Jesus. Jesus. Nowadays, we have staff, we have videographers, we have photographers, we have uh, sound people, we have volunteers. We we are a different organization. Pastor Hector is not paying, we found out, the tithes to the district, and that is the reason he was removed by not giving tithes to the district. 2000, uh, February 2015, he announced his resignation, effective March 15. Now the truth and lies are now exposed by these deceitful corporate pastors. They have stolen everything, including the property of Faith Bible Church, now already claiming that they are the one, the original owner, and now, even put now again, another congregation that this pastor that they assign, even what, celebrated their anniversary, fourth anniversary, 2019, and the name is Hope Fellowship, a four square church. And the founding pastor is Jeff Nelson. Macaroni. Right? This is uh, my brother, Kanoni Abo, my spiritual brother. That only now that I can really say he is a real contractor because he is now here. His license, he, he already uh, surrendered it before just to serve the, that dying church in which we help to rebuild everything spiritually and even the building. And these uh, people from the corporate church just came over and took over that I did not even see even the shadow with it. I think seven years I was there 24-7 in that church and I never seen these people. And then they came, they were there, and they evicted us, all right? 
this is the entrance of the uh, this is residential building located at 12055 Wicks Street, Sun Valley, California. Okay, this is the main door and this is the uh, fellowship hall of the residential building and this is the kitchen where they remove the uh, gas rains uh, lately and uh, okay These are the uh, resume. And, and the restroom has a shower. And the other side is the women restroom that has a shower also okay. and here's another room okay uh, this room is a multifunctional room that is connected to the pastor, senior pastor room, and also this room is connected and has a door connected to the kitchen. So, and and can be considered as a unit for a single dwelling and here's another room in this property that is used uh, this is used as a children's room okay. and And it has its own okay, uh, restroom. And have another door going outside. And this can be considered as a single family dwelling room for a single and here's uh, the and here's another room uh, yes a regular room that is used by the accounting department okay. and this is the door of the pastors the senior pastor uh, room office and here's another room that we used to use as our classroom in the Los Angeles ministerial Bible school is now under renovation
Okay. And it has a door uh, going to the side, uh, side of the church. And this is also a big uh, room. The floor area is also big. Okay. And here it is another room that we use as a small chapel okay before okay. Uh, it's also considered uh, a good size room because this is used as a small chapel in which 50 people can be uh, can occupy this room okay and another room a small room connected to the to the nursery okay uh, okay this uh, one is the nursery it has okay this is the main uh, hall or like a hall of the nursery and this nursery has three small rooms and this one uh, it's still dark okay cannot see okay this is used uh, like a uh, for exercise exercises and this room is the video room uh, where I do my uh, videos on which I am the only official staff or personnel that use this room because all the equipments that I use in my videos are inside this room and this room is only a small room and this is the only room that they put a number one number and they just put it uh, the number one is like is an, in a band back paper printed and they uh, put it on the door that I use as a video room for my job okay and they put the number one number and that is the only room that has the number one number okay and this is a room that don't have even any built-in uh, closet this is a small room and here's another room Okay, that is used for storage. All right, and this is another one that is a library. Okay, right. so all the books are here. So they call it the library. And then there is another office, uh, a room used by another pastor as an office. Okay, a small room also, 
and this uh, door is a storage for storage and that door is leading outside the building okay and also remember this including the chapel is also constructed 1955 all right and the most important thing about this property this was really allocated as for the church in this community so the property of this church is in accordance to the plan when this community over here tell pair weeks okay because before San Fernando Valley is a agricultural land so this property is the only property that I can say really for the church okay according to the city plan the first owner of this property is a Baptist church and this was bought by the Faith Bible Church under the pastorate of Rene Ramientos, 1995. 1997, they become a charter church of the International Four Gospel, which is also a Pentecostal church. The title are two. One is residential and the address is 12055 Wicks Street, Sambali, California. And the other title is also two acres, is a vacant lot, an agricultural land located in Allegheny at the back. According to the handbook of the International Church of the Poly Square Gospel Incorporated, the title of your properties will be now be entrusted to them and you're going to lose your being a corporation because you, it, you will become part of the organization or the corporation which should be now the international charts of the Port Square Gospel Incorporated and the main office is in Sunset Boulevard where the title of your properties will be handled to them. The International Church of the Paul Square Gospel was incorporated to establish and conduct an organization to manage the affairs of the corporation and to supervise the management of the churches of the Paul Square Gospel and to license and ordain ministers and missionaries for the furtherance of the work of the corporation and to establish and grant charters to churches known as Paul Square Churches to be subject at all times in the supervision of respondent corporation. All property or equipment acquired by any Port Square Church is required to be held in the name of the International Church. The Bible's Father provides as follows. Okay. Its chart is required by, by the Bible's to keep books of account and to prepare full and accurate monthly reports of activities in such form as is prescribed by Respondent Board of Directors. The original of such reports is sent to the Corporation Secretary and one copy to the district supervisor and copies to such other district officers as may be designated by the district supervisor. 
the bylaws provide for an ordination committee to regulate the licensing and ordination of ministers. As a prerequisite to licensing or ordination, its pastor is required to subscribe and adhere to the minister's code of ethics. The code provides in part, I further pledge to give loyal service to whatever office, church or ministry to which I am appointed or called, and I will at all times work in harmony with all superior officers and organization policies. I will recognize the board as the governing body of the organization and will get fullest cooperation to its decision. When ministering in the pulpit, I will wear a board square uniform. And the bylaws provide for the issuance of a credential card to indicate that a minister has been ordained or licensed according to the requirements of the articles and bylaws. If a minister resigns from the corporation or is removed, his credentials may be revoked. The bylaws further provide that a minister shall have his credential revoked and shall be removed from his office in the corporation or pastorate if he is found guilty of unchristian conduct, neglect of official duties, or failure to keep or destroy of church records. The district supervisor is to be concerned with the health and status of every church in the district, the well-being and the leadership of every pastor, and the ongoing business matters concerning the congregation. The parish square pastors are appointed by the district supervisor with the approval of the board directors and its consultation with local church council. In this sense, four square pastors are sent once and gifts to local bodies of believers. We're going to remodel the windows. We've already talked about it. I'm just going to have to film some things up. The same people that are helping us. Oh, such an amazing crew. They said, you know, look, look how ugly your windows are. And I said, I agree. After they painted everything, they said, look at how ugly. And I wanted them to go outside and go, look how ugly the windows are compared to what's happening all around. And I said, yes, Lord, new windows. New windows. And then we have a plan to put a basketball court in front, which will double as parking, yes, but I would like for your young people to come, just like when we were growing up here in this church. We didn't go home because we scrimmage. Every day we went and we scrimmage. And I'm hoping that we can do that. Is that going to cost some money? Yes, it will. But God is good that way. And I'm going to believe in faith. There are plans, of course. We always talked about buying that place across the street. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't given up on that. Most of you that expressed that vision before, I have never, I have never given up on that thought. And one day, I would hope that we would be so financially strong that I can do what that person did to me yesterday, where he said, "If you want to sell your church, bear funding in 90 days." I'm hoping that someday we can make them an offer they cannot refuse. You know? Go somewhere else, but we want this place, the adjoining place. I'm believing that. Not in anger, not in discrimination, but knowing that we serve God. We, we want to build a multi-purpose hall in the back, a gymnasium, aside from the paving of the front. There's also this vision of building housing for the, 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 the unfortunate, you know, for, for homeless people build this transitional ministry. I'm sharing this to you so you can pray with it. But I am believing and I hope you would believe with me, especially those of you who are pastors in this church, that someday this generation of pastors, before anyone goes to heaven, we would see this and we would do it. Scripture says, God will hear your older man rings. I celebrated my birthday recently. I said, how old are you? I said, I'm 14. You're old now, son. And so I said, thank you. It's time for God to give the dreams. So I hope that dream burns eternal until the time that God takes us all. And then, even better dreams. Because then we would be in the presence of God. Oh, I pray we would continue on and serve God as He has called us. Let's all rise as we receive the benediction.
but today I think it's uh, it's a little better than usual. So I would ask those of you, even if you're in a little bit of a hurry, to please sit down and partake of the food and celebrate with us. Anyway, some of you guys, I need to shake your hands. It's been a long time since I've seen you. We need to make our acquaintance and we need to meet. It is customary in this church that we give the benediction and it goes like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to all of you. To you, to your children, to your children's children, to your children's children's children. The 29th anniversary was 2013 October. Since we are following the anniversary when this local church was, was founded by the Reverend Nene Ramientos, 1985, so we are still recognizing who we are as a faith Bible church. And we are part owners, all the congregation members are part owners of this church. And also being a custodian, I am a part owner of this property. And I was designated officially by the senior pastor with the approval of the council. And everybody, everybody knows that, that I am the official custodian. When the district and the district administrator in, in connivance with the new pastor, when they dissolve us, the faith Bible church is direct violation of our rights and to the bylaws of the Paul Square Church. 2012, I became now the official videographer of the 
Lambs D Bible School and the church and also and I'm also receiving an amount of $80 a month and I, that is considered as a salary by Pastor Hector so now I am now considered as an employee of the Forest Square Church and the amount I am receiving as a salary $80 is very much below in accordance to the labor law. When they removed the senior pastor, Hector Chambao, March 15, I addressed it already to the district administrator that we should be paid in accordance to the law. And we are asking a three, three years payback in accordance to the labor law. It was ignored by the district administrator and until now, we are fighting for it. If the statute of limitation for the labor already expired, then who now owns these videos? So now, I am now the original owner since they did not pay me of all of these videos that is in the internet. And this is a direct violation now of my rights to copyright. Because even the YouTube is asking now, whose copyright is this? With a question mark beside the copyright. share to you uh, is about uh, this is really uh, as what you can see here in my t-shirt maybe I'm out of my <laughs> yeah because, because I, uh, when I came into this church I made my greatest choice that I made to be here I've been doing this church. I've been living in this church for six years. Six years. That's my nephew. That's what my nephew even told me. However, I have seen a lot of things that's happening in this church. That's the reason I'm still here. Praise God. I have seen some prophecy or vision that we made uh, that's four years ago with Pastor Hector and uh, former Pastor Noni mm -hmm. that uh, you know this church uh, four years ago is not like this then we have this kind of, and, and, and then the members of the church maybe 20 or 30 and sometimes uh, the praise and worship is already there that we, uh, we're going to sing and somebody asked me where are the people? We are the only people here. And uh, I've seen Pastor Hector how he struggled. And then he asked me if I can uh, stay in this church for a while just to watch the property because it is vandalized. There's some graffiti, they're talking to them, they're, and they're throwing a lot of, you know, a lot of things over here. And, uh, it took, and it took me uh, a month to decide, so I, I just slipped in my car, and Pastor Hector told me, come on, go inside, oh, no, I just slipped in my car, for a month, that's winter time, and uh, rather, uh, don't know, see. And then I decided, because I don't want to, you know, take a 
advantage of something that they're offering. So I just endure the winter time in school. And the passport I told said, okay, after, after a month, I decided, okay, maybe I can uh, stay in this church because I want also to know God in Jesus Christ. Because I was raised in a Catholic family because in the Philippines, we are all Catholic, 90%. And then I still remember my mother bringing me in the church. That's my first exposure. And then I became an altar boy. When I graduated from elementary, my father decided that I would go in the seminary, minor seminary. Because uh, he thinks I'm going to become a priest. <laughs> you know, to become a priest, Catholic priest, it would take you a long time. If you start from a uh, high school. I think it would take 12 years of study. And us here, it would take us only, what, three years, three hours, two days, and, you, and finally, you might become a pastor. And to become a priest, it would take you 12 years. That's a long, and you will be staying in the seminary. You see? It's like the, uh, and it's also expensive that everybody can go to the seminary because, you know, you have to pay a lot of money because the board and lighting and everything. Anyway, uh, when I uh, finished my uh, minor seminary, we started 16, we graduated 12, and Nurati became a priest Catholic in my uh, class. But some become a pastor, some become uh, active in their churches, and now uh, maybe I became doorman for a long time and now I'm active here in this church uh, trying to help whatever I can help. And then uh, I have this kind of vision also that uh, because there's something that I'm doing because this is, uh, you know, United States is what we call the land of opportunity. You make it here, something you do, you're made. Then I have something that I'm doing that uh, un until now I'm still wondering to our Lord, what, what, why are you holding me still here? Like, you know, suffering, this and that. But however, uh, while reading the Bible, because I became dormant for a long time, it's only lately that I started reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to share something in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 that it says here, to everything, there is a season and time to every purpose under heaven. So everybody here in this class have a purpose Amen. Amen. under heaven. Amen. Because everybody is unique. Yes. Maybe you're good in preaching. Maybe you're good on something. My gift is different. I can make something out of something. Mm -hmm. So. Actually, when I, I started uh, really committing myself, I even made that, you know, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, over there. No. Yeah. Church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I handmade it. Mm -hmm. Then, I made the cross. And everybody's even laughing when I try, I'm starting to make it. I said, what are you doing? I'm making a cross. What cross? A small cross? No. I crucify her. <laughs> it's a big one. <laughs> so anyway, so that's 2008. And then uh, one thing also that I uh, really love in this place is a small congregation. And then it's paid off. We don't have any neighbors that's really going to bother you. So I started living in the airstream, doing some research work. I love it. Because nobody's bothering me and they think I'm crazy. So, anyway, uh, to make the story short, uh, I started also attending the school because I want to learn something. Mm -hmm. How the church uh, works, what is this they're talking about. So, by being dormant for a long time, I started to know Jesus because when Pastor Hector uh, asked me to receive Jesus Christ in 2008. He said, you know what? When I, uh, uh, when I uh, pray, pray that you're going to receive Jesus Christ, 
I don't feel anything. And I told him the same to you also. I mean, I feel anything. <laughs> See? Because maybe the seed is there. But you need nourishment to germinate it, to grow little by little. It's not, it's not, I pray for you, you receive it already. It's not. You have to work for your salvation. You let it grow. You have to nourish it to be spiritual. Amen. And we have an awesome God. Amen. <laughs> you see? Because the reason that I'm going to say that we have an awesome God, God and Jesus Christ. You know, there's, 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 uh, when Jesus Christ was uh, crucified, there's two guys with him. And one said to him, Remember me. Once you come to your kingdom. You know what he asked? Just to be remembered. But Jesus, see his heart. How sincere he is. His faith. And what he said? Jesus said to him, Today, you will be in paradise for you. Amen. Nothing is too late for us here. That's all I can share. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. In 2015, there is already a proposal that they're going to change. Since Forty Square has grown in other parts of the world regarding property, the proposal includes the first step toward allowing Forty Square churches to own their own property rather than having their title held by the National Church, as currently the case. Revised provision allow for the churches joining Forty Square to become fully part of the movement while keeping their property in a separate legal entity. Now, that property can be now owned by the real owner to own their own property. And what they did in 2015, they immediately dissolved us. There is a bad faith ongoing on. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back.
Will you decide now to follow Jesus? Will you decide now to follow Jesus? No turning back, no turning back. No now it's our duty back. to redeem back no what belongs to God. Back. Whatever was taken by this manipulative band of deceivers, we, the local Faith Bible Church that was founded by the Reverend, Reverend René Remientos, 1985, the property was bought by the congregation and the new pastor already declared that we are already dissolved when he announced their anniversary as of March 24, 2015. That is their anniversary. The Hope Fellowship Church that is now occupying that property in 12055 Wick Street. Okay? And 